Hello everybody and welcome back to LMN and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribing to the channel to help us grow and perhaps even check out our Patreon. This video is part of the Love Your Railway campaign and this week the topic is history and that's a fairly easy thing when you think about all of this that surrounds me here at the Statfold Barn Railway. All of this is living history that links us back to our industrial past. And that's the same for any heritage railway. It takes us directly back to our heritage and to our history and makes it relevant for all of us. However, some places have a wider scope of history that they can show off, particularly somewhere like here. As much as history is interwoven with everything that we do within the heritage sector, there is no heritage railway if we're not showing off that particular part of history. There are some bits that are more, well, historical than others. For instance, if we have a Black Five charging down a country heritage railway somewhere, that is a British built locomotive working on a British railway. However, something like this, this represents history on a far bigger scale because this represents our heritage. This was built over here at the end of the 1800s. And this represents our industrial past, when Britain was an industrial superpower, building machines and sending them all over the world. But it also represents the history of another continent. The B class behind me represents part of India's heritage and its history. It is one of the most recognizable designs of steam locomotive in the world and completely synonymous with India. In fact, in your early days as an enthusiast digging into the history of railways, there will almost undoubtedly be a picture of one of these slogging up the Himalayas. Layers. This history is rich for all of us to enjoy. And somewhere like Statford presents more than just ours. It shows how the steam engine has been a worldwide phenomenon and brings that history of the entire globe into one place for us all to be able to enjoy. And stuff like this, realistically, we shouldn't be able to see because this isn't just static. This is a living, breathing part of our history. And it's not just this one. You see, history can be more than just the story of where something actually worked, regardless of the fact that this thing actually worked in Tasmania. This represents a whole new design, and this is so linked into our history as a nation as we were developing new and exciting machines. This was British built as we were going, I wonder what we can do as we push the boundaries. This doesn't just represent the history of where it went and where it worked and its own personal story. It represents the history of development of the steam engine. This machine was cutting edge and the history of this thing alone is fascinating. When somebody came along and went, you know what? What if we took two steam engines and kind of put them together and put twisty bits in there? This thing is phenomenal. And this being here allows you to appreciate that and it's all part of that rich collective history of being able to walk around a museum like this. Because that's the wonderful thing about history in heritage. It's not just about the big thing there or the blue thing there or any of the other things. It's what it helps us to understand about the wider history of our nation, of what was going on at the time. Because without this, you don't really understand the rest of it. This can tell you so much about the wider scope of the people who helped build it, of the thoughts of the time, of how technology evolved. It's not just a steam engine, it's a glimpse back to a whole way of life. And it's the kind of heritage, the kind of history, the kind of living glimpse into our past that you don't really get with many other things. Because sure, you can stand and see a castle, but it's not really living, it's not really showing you how it once worked. It's not really doing exactly what it was meant to do. Well, and actually not that at all, because to be honest, this was meant to be pulling huge, great trains. So pulling a couple of carriages around Statfold, no, not so much, but you know, you get the gist. The exciting thing about a place like this is it showcases more than just our own history. Behind me are a pair of German built locomotives. So we get a snapshot into the history of Germany and their designs. And we see the way that they built locomotives and can compare the differences and the different schools of thought. A museum like this isn't just a snapshot into our past, but it's much more global. It's an amazing thing to be able to see so many different schools of thought, so many different cultures, and the way that it all comes together in the way of a steam engine, and how we today can be an enthusiast and appreciate that in the same way as we appreciate, say, that one or that one or anything else in here. 
We can appreciate the steam engine no matter where it's from. And while some people may be like, I prefer British built locomotives, there is a certain amount of appreciation for those developed elsewhere. And for a place like Statfold, it gives us this snapshot of development of the whole world, how we were going about making locomotives. This shows more than just them. That's a whole way of life. That's a completely different school of thought. The history connected to that and its heritage is totally unique to that engine. And the one next door to it has its own history and its own heritage. But that's something completely different from another part of the world. Bringing them here to play their part in that development of the steam engine, that story, that history, it's nothing short of wonderful. Because the history here is so rich, there's so much of it. And when you start digging and looking into the past, the stories that you can get from this stuff is just absolutely marvellous. And the best thing about it is that we're still kind of making it. Because this isn't the past. This isn't stuff that's dead and buried. The majority of the stuff in here is living and working. It really is living history. And as well as the worldwide history that we can represent with a collection like this, we can also talk about the history of a particular area. Here, surrounding me, we have some of the pen-ridden locomotives. These things worked together in their working life. And there's something particularly special about being able to bring them back together and have them in retirement side by side. To think that these would have shared a shed and seen each other on a daily basis. So having them all together again is nothing short of magical. And whilst a collection like this helps tell a collective part of our history, there are some more personal parts, particularly this one here. This is GP39, otherwise known as Bromcluith. And this is an important part of my personal history. In fact, this one has an awful lot to answer for because this is the first steam locomotive I ever drove. And this one infected me very strongly with the bug. And without this, I wouldn't be doing this and you wouldn't be watching this video. So this thing has got hell of a lot to answer for. And that's particularly exciting when I can come to a museum to see a collection and see part of my own personal history reflected there for others to enjoy and to see. Now, obviously, its effect on me isn't an important part of this thing's history, apart from the fact it was used to build a road, and that's not normally what steam engines are built for. But that's the wonderful thing about all of them. They've all got these funny little quirks to their history, their own little stories. It's more than just a machine. It's got a personality, it's got a timeline, and it's got development and people behind it all the way. The railway fraternity is incredible. It ties us all together and it links all our collective histories from now all the way back to those who operated it to those who built them. It's one of the best tools that we have anywhere to discuss the past and to show the real applications of what those of yesterday were doing and what they ended up making. And we're so very lucky, particularly in this country, with the sheer amount of our history that we can literally see and touch. And more importantly, actively get involved in. Being able to get actually involved in history is wonderful. And every time we come and we volunteer and we take part in a heritage railway or we just visit, we literally step back in time and we can feel, see and hear that history in real time. And that, that's really special and something completely undervalued. So the next time you visit a heritage railway, whether it's your volunteering turn or you've just come to visit, just appreciate the fact that you're going back in time. So let me know in the comments below if you have a personal connection with a piece of history like I do with GP39 here, or let me know your most interesting or amusing historical fact about the railways. And with that, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, how about clicking somewhere over there for another one of the videos from the Love Your Railway campaign. And if you want more information on the Staffold Barn Railway, the events and the kind of things that they do, there's a link to their website in the video description, as is a link to the trust who have recently saved 19B, because that's pretty cool as well. So thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time. ta -ra.